Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Good whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to today's Math Minute, I think Math Minute number 38. And welcome to some new subscribers. So I've had some videos blow up a little bit on another video platform that will go unnamed, but follow me there if you're on that video platform. It starts with a tick and it ends with a talk. And some of those lovely people have followed me over to this YouTube channel and subscribed. So I hope I can do some interesting videos. I mean, I was doing interesting videos already, right? That's why my original lovely followers were following me. Anyway, I want to look at something today called Simpson's Paradox. Simpson's Paradox is a statistical artifact that happens when we have a data set that demonstrates two very different relationships depending on whether or not we look at the data set as a whole or if we chunk up the data in some specific confounding ways. What I want to look at today is the craziest example I've ever seen of Simpson's paradox in the wild, vaccine efficacy uh, from some data that came out of Israel last month. So you may remember when the vaccines were originally approved, we're looking at like wildly successful vaccine effectiveness, like much greater than anybody thought was possible, 90%. But then this data that came out of Israel last month showed, well, actually vaccine effectiveness among the overall population has dropped to just 67.5%. Now, first of all, to be clear, 67.5% is still really good. Like if Gap sent me a coupon in the mail, for their jeans. Kids still shop at Gap, right? And they said it was 90% off. And I showed up at the store and I realized, oh my gosh, there's some fine print here. It actually says up to 90% off. And when I go to the register, it turns out I only get 67% off. I might be a little upset, but I'm still getting 67% off, right? It's still a good deal. But no doubt 67% is less than 90%. So what's going on here? Is it the Delta variant that's changing our effectiveness or something like that? And I think the answer is no. Again, this is actually a crazy example of Simpson's paradox. Just as a brief aside, what do I mean when I say Simpson's paradox? Consider a data set where you have a pretty obvious negative correlation. That is, as your independent variable X gets larger, you can see the dependent variable Y gets smaller. So that's an inverse relationship or a negative correlation. But if we chunk that data in interesting ways, you can see, oh, that relationship doesn't really hold up. In fact, it looks like the precise opposite relationship is going on. In this case, we can kind of look at these bands of data that all have positive correlations instead. Now, determining which is the true correlation, in a sense, depends entirely on the context of the data set, whatever problem you're actually looking at. It may be that within the bands, it's the positive correlation that is more true to the effect that we're looking at. Or it could be that we really should be paying attention to the overall data set, in which case it's that negative correlation that truly describes what's going on. If we chunk up our Israel vaccine data into two main groups, I think we can kind of figure out which of those two stories is the better one, what's actually going on here with the data. So I'm looking at two groups, under 50 effectiveness and over 50 effectiveness. And this is the part, this is the Simpsons paradox part that just blew my mind. Again, overall population effectiveness, 67.5%. Not bad, but not as good as we were expecting. But within our subpopulations, we're still looking at 92% effectiveness for those who are under 50, 85% effectiveness for those who are over 50. Now my expectation was overall population effectiveness should simply be some kind of weighted average between these two numbers. Like essentially, depending on whatever percentage of the population is under 50, we would just wait to that percentage for the 85% effectiveness, wait to the other percentage for the under 50 population for the 92% effectiveness, and then our overall effectiveness is just some number in between 85 and 92%. Even if we grant something weird could be happening with the data, we might think maybe it'll go as low as 80% or something, right? But how are you going to combine 92% effectiveness and 85% effectiveness and come out at the end with something only 67.5% effective? So I did what one does in these scenarios. I modeled it out using Desmos. What I'm looking at here, and I'll share this link, you can find it in the description below, is a way to think through what percentage of our population is under 50. That's actually my independent variable here. So as we go to the left and the right, I'm looking at what percentage of the population is under 50. When I'm over here toward the left, essentially 0% of my population is under 50, and so I'm anchoring that effectiveness around the 85% that the over 50 population experience. 
audiences. Closer to 100% of the population being under 50 means that I'm gonna be anchoring that vaccine effectiveness around that 92% that the under 50 population experiences. But you can see contrary to our expectation that we would have just a weighted average between these two numbers, the curve actually dips quite far down. In fact, if our population was 72% under 50, that would actually minimize the vaccine effectiveness for the overall population at about 68%. So I set up this model in Desmos, and this is starting to help me understand a little bit about what's going on here. And I came up with this kind of analogy that I think is helpful. Instead of thinking of this as if it's going to be a weighted average, think about those two anchor points we talked about. What's going on if essentially all of the population is over 50 and what's going on if essentially none of the population is over 50. If we think of this like a suspension bridge, where we're going to put some cables anchored at these two points, of course that cable is going to hang down, right? And that's what's happening with our overall population effectiveness. It's hanging down between these two points. But what's the gravity, right? What is it that's pulling this down the way that gravity would be pulling down the cable for the suspension bridge? And what Simpson's paradox tells us is there must be some kind of confounding factor that's causing the picture painted by the overall data set to be so very different from the picture painted by the chunked up data sets. In this particular case, that confounding factor is all about which population is getting vaccinated more and why. You can see although both populations have pretty high vaccination rates, the over 50 population, for totally understandable reasons, has a much higher 90% vaccination rate compared to the under 50 population, which is only 73%. I say it makes sense that the over 50 population would be more vaccinated because of course the over 50 population is also at more risk due to COVID-19. And that's what we see happening here in the cases for the fully vaccinated population. The confounding factor is the fact that it's precisely the group you would expect to be more vaccinated that is also experiencing more severe cases. In this case, the number of cases they're experiencing is actually overwhelming in some sense what's going on in the rest of the population. You can see the rates are just so much lower in the rest of the population, with the one exception being cases among the unvaccinated over 50, but that's by far the smallest of our group, so that part doesn't end up making too much difference to the overall data. It's all about the cases that this particular over 50 and highly vaccinated group is experiencing. That's the gravity that's pulling down the vaccine effectiveness between our two anchor points. If you want to try and wrap your head around this data more, again, the link is down in the description below. You can actually mess around with the percentage under 50 that's unvaccinated and the percentage over 50 that's unvaccinated. This is definitely a simplified scenario. You can see I'm simply doing one minus whatever that percentage is, when in the real world there is fully vaccinated, not vaccinated at all, and then this middle region if you only got one shot or something. You can also see that you can choose your case rate. So I modeled these off of the data that came out of Israel last month, but you can pick any case rates you want. And as you change these, you can see it changes the shape of that curve and it's gonna change very much what's going on. The green is just meant here to help you visualize what's going on. The green area would be my expectation. If it's a weighted average between the two anchor points, that's what the green area of the curve is. Red is everything that would fall outside of our expectations and is not a weighted average. So there you have it, the craziest example I've ever seen in the wild of Simpson's paradox. Yes, the vaccine is still effective, Delta variant notwithstanding. It's just that when we chunk up our data and don't account for these confounding factors, it makes the effectiveness look a lot lower than it actually is when we look at effectiveness within the relevant variable, which is age, which leads to the risk you have for various complications due to coronavirus, and therefore, of course, also accounts for which groups are going to be more motivated to get vaccinated. I hope you found that interesting. I hope that that's helpful. Please comment down below with any questions you have. Again, I really had to kind of play around with this data to get a sense of what's going on. So I probably messed some things up. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you want to see more of this kind of video, like and subscribe. Make sure to give it that thumbs up. And otherwise, I will see y'all around.